Hey, this is Russell, and I work at the video store, the place you can go to once a week whenever it is movie night. I love this job because interesting people pop in each week to rent something, and then when the store is quiet, I get to watch movies and series and talk about them with my awesome friends that work here. All right, welcome to the video store. Let's open up the shop. How's it, Kolsky? Good morning, Rusky. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my chum? Yeah, I'm fine. Lovely to have you. Yeah. Uh, today on the show, we have Bonko Corsa oh, coming to I know Bonko. pop in to rent something. We, we've just opened up shop. We are going to get ourselves sorted. Nice. And then uh, Bonko's going to pop in. Um, he's quite a big deal. Yeah, he's like insane. I worked with him on uh, Territorial Pissings. Which then became Next Sorry. Day Youth. Yeah. Which we're going to talk about. Oh, do we talk about the name change? We not the name change, but we talk about that film. Okay, brilliant. Which is a very interesting film to talk about. Um, he is quite a big deal, as I said, in Households for his role on the Showmax telenovela The Wife. Yeah. So much so that he earned the title The National Husband. The National... Wow. It's Flattering. Big, yeah. Quite something. Yeah. Uh, he's also a good looking chap. Yeah. Okay, so so good enough that he was featured on the cover of GQ South Africa. Damn. And uh, one of the most impressive castings, which we will talk about, is the fact that he was in The Woman King. He's also acted alongside um, a bunch of other Hollywood actors. And so I want to pick his brain about that. That's amazing. But uh, the big deal and the reason for him coming in is the fact that he is in the upcoming film Headspace, which is an animated feature. Oh. that uh, is going to hit cinemas now in the week that this episode is coming out on Friday. So Friday the 15th, Headspace is a good family film. Brilliant. You are going to see trailers for it. It is going to look uh, as if it was made in America because it is set in America with American characters and actors. But I think what is interesting about it is that it is South African. Damn, a South African insane. animation company is doing it. And they're doing it specifically to show the rest of the world uh, how good they are. Bold. We always so love a big swing. It's cool. And he is the voice of the main character. So we will get into yeah, that. Well done, Bonko. And uh, lots more coming out. So we are going to talk about that uh, more after the chat. So for cool. all of those who are joining us perhaps for the first time, um, we have our guests pop in to, to rent something in a moment and we'll have that chat. But please stick around afterwards because myself and Cole still have a whole day um, of work here. <laughs> and when the store is quiet at the end of the day, um, we will chat a bit more about what we're watching. Uh, we've got some cool stuff that we're all watching and we'd love to chat more about it and, and, and share that with you. Awesome. A, um one thing happening at the moment for us at the video store is that we are running a little competition. Yes, we are. Which we will get into also after the chat. But uh, the very exciting A24 film Talk to Me is also, this is perhaps now for the adults or for the couples, not the, not the families going out to watch movies this weekend. Um, this is a pretty scary looking horror. Yeah. Which is opening on Friday the 15th. But the night before... In both Cape Town and Joburg, there is a special pre-release screening that us as the video store have been given some free tickets to give away yeah. to you guys. And so over on our Instagram page, you can't miss it. Uh, it's the post that says, attention all customers. Yeah, I'm not going to miss that. We want you to uh, tag a friend that you would want to take to this. Someone whose hand you can hold. Yes. Yeah. Someone who, whose hand you can grip because Tightly. this looks uh, pretty spooky. Yeah. And uh, we could be choosing you to come and join us on Thursday. And we'd love to hang out with you and chats and get and to chat. know you. Yeah. And it's going to be a great film. Uh, the other thing, which I'd love to also make as an announcement to all our customers, mm. all the guys that are busy browsing the store now, okay, coming in to rent something, is we are partnering with our good friends at Double Shot, which is a really good coffee company. We got a coffee sponsor. We've got a coffee sponsor. Oh, my goodness. Game changer. Yeah. So they uh, have a great little um, 
public facing store in Rosebank. So you can go and try it there, but they also do a lot of Rosebank online Mall. sales. It's not Rosebank Mall, it's where the BGR is. There's that great kind of outdoor plaza. Yes. Where you can walk around. They used to be in Bramfontein for the longest time. Okay. And so we've known um, Double Shot for many years, and uh, they're great coffee. And over on doubleshot.co.za, you can order your coffee beans because for your home or for office, and you can use the promo code Video Store 10 to get 10% off your order. Nice. Uh, so very good coffee. Um, I think we should uh, get into it, huh? Yeah. All right. Um, you, what do you got to do? You got to go pack some shells. Yeah. Um, I think uh, quite a few customers I saw were fooling around with the DVDs and they were pulling them, putting them out of order. So I have to go <laughs> alphabetize it again. Okay. You know. All right. Cole, so you go do that and uh, Bonko is going to pop in. Say hi for me. All right. I will. All right. Uh, let's get into it. This is Bonko Koza popping in to Ransom. How's it? Good, dude. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank Properly. you. Properly. Yes. We, we're going to get into it. You, 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 we had something to do with each other many, many years ago. Many, many. A good six, seven years ago. <laughs> and um, it's so good to have you back and it's going to be you. nice to get to know you. Thank you. Um, perhaps as a, as a kickoff, um, the reason we're chatting here is that you are one of the voice artists of the upcoming film Headspace. Yeah, Headspace. Which is going to be interesting and cool and fun. And yeah. I think for me personally, what I think is the most interesting thing about Headspace mm. for everyone is that it's a South African film. It is a South African film and it's, and it's quite interesting uh, how, you know, how far we can take South African creativity or South African content. Yeah, because it's it's going to go out and the trailers are going to be there and people are going to see it and they're going to perhaps think it's an American film. Absolutely. That's the thing, right? And there's so many American films that, are, that come out based in South Africa or something like that or yeah. set in South Africa and you're like, okay, but this is made by the, Americans. Yeah. It's our turn. And now this is the other way around <laughs> right. where, where a South African production uh, is happening that is making what looks like an American film. Fully. Um, I think it's interesting. I would have loved to have personally seen a South African setting. Right. But I still think it's great. And it's yeah. fun. And it looks like a very interesting concept. It's, it, it's very similar. Um, it almost seems a little bit like Inside Out. Yeah. Um, the idea, perhaps you can, you can help explain, but the idea is that the aliens arrive, but they're tiny. Yeah. So it starts off with this... With this um these aliens, right? And they're kind of, it's like this huge chase, without spoiling it for everyone. Yeah. It's this huge, I don't want to say car chase. <laughs> space, space chase? Space chase, yeah. Space yeah. chase in the galaxies and, um, you know, the good guys are trying to get away from the bad guys and they get sucked into this black hole that brings them to Earth. Okay. Right? And it's their first time they've ever experienced Earth. But they get, they get, they land in a, in a cup, just like I'm holding right now, uh, in a cup of juice that's being held by the lead character, Norman. Yeah. And uh, he sucks. He takes a suck of the juice through his straw and uh, consumes the aliens. Okay. And then... Did you ever watch... Uh, <laughs> this is making me think of... Did you ever watch The Magic School Bus? Yes. Are you old enough to no, absolutely. have consumed that? How old are you now? I'm 32. 32. Okay. Yeah. I'm on the... I'm on the other side of that mountain. All right. That 30, that 30 mountain. <laughs> but, uh, okay, but do you remember Magic School Bus? I remember the Magic School Bus, which was more educational, right? Sure, sure, mm. sure. But they, they, yeah, that was a TV show growing up where there, were, there was a, a magical school bus where they could shrink or go big or go small. And when they went small, they went into like the body the or body. they went into things. But as small as like the vessels and the cells and they could like, yeah. Yeah. It was charming. Okay, so these aliens somehow end up in this dude's head. They somehow end up in his body, right? Um, so their, their whole plan or their whole storyline is to get back to wherever they come from. So they got to recharge their spaceship. So inside the human organism, the most powerful or electric source, power mm. source would be the brain. Okay. So then they, they then latch onto Norman's brain, then having control over him. Okay. Right. <laughs> pretty, pretty weird, and but it's cool. That's cool. Okay, so you played Norman. You yeah. were the voice of Norman. Have you, have you done much... Uh, voiceover stuff before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, 
I'm a voiceover artist. Okay. By by day. Okay, that's uh, a nice bread and butter for actors. Isn't absolutely, it? yeah. Um, dude, crazy enough, my first my first uh, uh, voiceover was when I was 13 years old, bro. Okay. I did a Clarisville commercial. I still remember the script thing. It went something like, um, <laughs> talking to girls is not a problem for me anymore. Using Clarisville face wash every day gives me the confidence and good look to be who I want to be. And did you have to do the American accent? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit. Was it an international ad? I think so. Okay, but now for this... You're doing the American accent. Yeah, I put on American accent for this one. Okay, yeah. how, how how was that for you? Um, what was really challenging was the age. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for I've I've done I've performed. In you an can American be a thirty year old American. How I can do, be a thirty year old American man. How do you how do you how do you how did you change your voice to be more young? Yo, dude, it was. You'd have, to, you'd have to sort of just pitch it up high. Yeah, it was slightly pitch higher, higher as well, but without making it kind of like. Um, forced, contrived, and uh, oh, that's cool. I mean, uh, the, <laughs> the guys in the studio were like, they, I would drop into like my smoker voice, like, <laughs> or like my laugh yeah, yeah, would be yeah. like, <laughs> they're like, hey, bro, <laughs> no, 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 hold that, no, no, no. keep that, keep that behind yeah. wraps. Uh, cool. Okay, um, that that's that's fun, man, and we, we'll we'll talk more about it as we go. But right, um, where you and I first uh, bumped into each other or encountered each other was uh, you were in the film Necktie Youth, right. which was very much a bioscope film. And, sure. And what I mean by that is the bioscope, when we opened in 2010, very much championed uh, local films mm -hmm. wherever possible. But we were a little, you know, we were based in town. Yeah. We were at night, nighttime at town. Yeah. You know, so we, we were giving ourselves the opportunity to play more experimental, more edgier stuff. Right. And so when a local film like Necktie Youth came out this was perfect for the bioscope which was like a boundary pushing quite risque or quite i don't know how we can describe it but um sibs lived in the building yes he's the director yes and um i think he made a very important film where but before that russell yeah because you just said when the film came out yeah i remember we shot scenes in the bioscope oh shit for the movie for the movie okay there's a scene where um what, what do they try and make it look like? They try and make it look like an interview. So we had <clears throat> Tessa Jabba kind of interviewing you, uh, like all the cast, or myself and Sips. There were people like on stage in kind of an interrogation style, uh, ghost light type of thing. Okay. And then Tessa would, would, would um, her character would interview us. That's oh, one of my. That's right. And yeah. you shot that at the cinema. Oh my I God. think that was like the first or second day of I'm the losing, film. I'm losing my mind. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we got to know Sibs and... I think what's what's cool about the film, because sadly I don't think it's too readily available. I got a, I, got, I got a few copies. If yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a physical. It was pre-streaming, obviously. Sure. Um, and what was very cool about it is that it was very true to, um, how we talk to each other. It was very sure. naturalistic. Sure. It was, it was a, it was quite punk rock in the sense yeah, that it was trying to show what the kids get up to right what we actually get up to and it was quite a nice play on wealth as well mm. so it wasn't necessarily a township story it was sure. more of like sure. the story of a, of a of a wealthier youth living in Joburg and of course it it dabbled and very much pinned itself around mental health and trauma sure. and issues yeah. and it was very similar to um like a harmony korean film the and i kids. know kids right. exactly and mm. i know sibs loved that kind of stuff so it was cool that he made quite an edgy quite a yeah i say important because it was quite cool to have that come out of yeah. south africa we we tend to have somewhat cookie not cookie cutter but we tend to have similar stuff mm. come out yeah a lot of it is funded by governments and so they they have they have a certain kind of theme to their output yeah. and, and here was something that was a bit more experimental which wasn't easy to make um mm. I mean, if you want to go against the grain, you're going to have to, you, you, you'll expect the difficulties that come with going against the grain. And this was very indie as well. This I mean. is hella indie. <laughs> we shot it in 10 days. Um, yeah. Just around Joburg. Shot it on a 5D, bro. A Canon 5D. Yeah. yeah. And that's, Shuan actually won the cinem cinematographer. He actually won best uh, cinematography at the Safters the it, next year. It was very beautiful. Yeah. Um, but your main thing is, or has been, the wife, right? Not necessarily. I mean, we all have those projects that are 
what would you say your milestone milestone project? Because yeah, man, Nectar Youth was 2015. Wild, right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel old as fuck right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nectar Youth was 2015, and the wife was 2021, bro. Okay. So um, no, I mean, lots has has happened, and yeah. you've been very busy, but. But I think in gen- in terms of general, um, how South Africa probably knows you yeah, the best would be from um, a, a large would... percentage would be from the wife. Yeah, yeah, because the wife was just a huge show. I mean, I don't speak for myself; I speak for everyone else. Every cast member on that thing, their lives all changed, bro. All of us. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, what was that? What was that change like for you? Yeah, overwhelming is the first word that comes to mind because it happened so fast. Yeah, and. Um, so big, so fast, and so real. Look, let's, I'll make an example with Necktie Youth. You know, when we were on Necktie Youth back then, we felt famous as fuck, right? Because <laughs> yeah. we were... The band's going to make it. Yeah, dude, we, yeah. we're in a band, we're touring the world, you know, we're in New well, York. Well, yeah, well, Necktie Youth, sorry for people to understand, um, for those who don't know, mm. um, because it was this more artistic piece of work. Right. Um, it got treated very well in that regard. Yeah. And a film like that, especially quite a unique film coming from Africa, made by a black filmmaker who's right. who's cool and hip and yeah. and on you know, finger on the pulse of, you know, movie kids about kids and made the youth by kids. And, and all of that. Yeah. So he was a darling that really got taken um across the world yeah, as this film um played in, in places. Okay, so you yeah. travelled with him. Well f- some of the time. Yeah. Um, you know, Sibs obviously did most of the press run. But yeah, dude, it felt like we were on top of the world until maybe the next year when you're like, okay. Another one of these has now come and... Yeah, or you don't yeah. get another one of these, right? Yeah, or you, yeah. You just book a commercial next time and then slowly and slowly you start realizing, okay, Necktie Youth was maybe a niche or... Uh, yeah, it, it, it was a moment. With, it was a great was moment, a moment in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But with the wife, bro, the big difference is that I can't walk around anymore. Okay. You know. I was about to say, where, how, how do you get stopped? Most, like most malls, Fuck, most. Everywhere, man. Yeah. Everywhere. Because um, you, you were the lead of the, right, the wife. Right. Okay. So it's, it just it was just a, a whole nother level I'd never understood. Uh, I'd never braced myself or, or prepared for. I thought I knew. Yeah. Um, which is. My my whole idea would be like, oh, people buying you drinks or like, uh, yeah, you know, the occasional, hey, the occasional, what's up? you yeah. know, all expenses paid trip to a festival or something. But no, we're talking about like people running up to you late from all ages, grannies, kids, yeah. you know, calling you by a character name. Some calling you by your name. Yeah. Some people know my like my personal stuff and they'd be like, hey, you know, you do the voiceovers. I'm like, hey, no one knows I do voiceovers. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just like your voiceover stuff. So it's like, wow. Um, I've so, really fell into a world of like so all mainstream. Of a, yeah, all of a sudden you had to become more aware of what people know and what yeah. people see. And right, okay. So yeah, I think I think it, it, for the most part, I would say it brought fame. Yeah, fame from 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 what I understand, fame is like just being known for yeah, something the, in particular, and the ability to to have your general life changed. Yeah, man. Where now all of a sudden it is quite different. Yeah, and I I try f- not fight against it, but I try I I tried to resist it, till I realized, look, um, if someone I really admired was right in front of me, and I had the opportunity to say, and hi, I had the yeah. opportunity to say hi and take a photo and make that moment live forever, I I would. Yeah, you so, got to sometimes remind yourself of that. Absolutely. Um, there was a there was a, I don't know, maybe, perhaps you can explain it, but mm. the the exit of the wife. Sure. What 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 happened there? So we we had we had planned to shoot three seasons, right? Um, under one contract. So this character was rough, bro. He's like this, this uh, wife beating, yeah, psychopath killer, oh, freaking God. guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And I went really hard with him, like almost method, you know. Yeah. Um, almost <laughs> you method. Dan- you Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis, the bro. You Joaquin yeah. Phoenix, the dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And it just became quite taxing for me. And I think we took, they took a break between season two and three. And yeah, you know the feeling of like being on set and when you suddenly sit down, it all comes back to you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, What, the, the, all, all the sort of negative energy around that character? Yeah, I, be- I started becoming aware of it. And I was, you know, I suffered a little bit of a 
of a depression. Yeah, a little bit okay. of a depression um, post season two, which didn't allow me to kind of get back into season three. Okay, yeah, you and you left at the end of season two. I left at the end of season two. Okay. Um, yeah, man, I was just not in a good place. Yeah, that and that's it's like, like I say, like everything happened so fast, so big, and that's why overwhelming would kind of be my my overall statement of it. But then it's interesting that you then chose that. That you you chose right? Yeah, I did. So you chose to to control that overwhelmingness, Absolutely. and you contr- okay. So yeah. so you said, guys, I can't do this anymore. I said, guys, I'm sorry. And um, so and so they've they've since gotten another actor to be you. Yeah, to be your character. Yeah, to play, season three. To play um, clearly the character. Okay, which because, is which is fun, right? Yeah, and I think, but I think what's interesting is the entertainment industry has got a lot going for it to to get you exposed and yeah. especially with something like the music industry so much is is built to showcase upcoming talent sure because that's when everybody that's what everybody feels is the most important and i guess it is but nobody really talks about the struggles once you're somewhere mm. not necessarily at the top because nobody knows where the top is that's mm. that's infinite yeah but once you're up there how you maintain how you manage yourself yes. how you do it you know, how do you, as a band, for example, stay relevant after your fourth album? Right. Where your relationship with your fans is very similar to a relationship you have with a partner. Where mm. after one year of, you know, great uh, romantic love, you've got to evolve yeah. into another kind of love. Yeah. And so you've got to still be relevant. You've still got to be exciting. You've still yeah. got to capture them. Yeah. But I think it's interesting that you had yourself a really good gig yeah. in the world of acting, but yeah. you chose to step away. Dude, I love what you said about what that analogy you just made now about it's like a partner. Cause you, yeah. You know, because you can't bullshit your partner, dude. You know, yeah. you, could, you could walk in, you know, walk in the house feeling, uh, you know, I'm married now, so I know this thing. I can't yeah. bullshit my wife. My wife knows everything about me. She knows my moods, my ups, my downs, when I'm yeah. excited, when I'm not. So it's, it's like that, and I felt I would be doing a disservice to this new relationship I had. I would be undermining this new relationship with all these supporters if I had to come in just for the money, because they didn't meet me just for the money. Look, yeah. the money wasn't great on the wife in the you know uh, season one and two. I literally did that because you know I was like a young artist, and I was trying to you know it, it looked like something that could be lucrative for my career. Yeah, and it wasn't really for the money. But then with with the you know with fame and now this popularity and things you know were starting to feel easier i became mindful that look it's easy to say yeah just because everyone knows me now and they're offering me like a shit ton of money or like more money than season one and two i can i can do this without you guys knowing that i'm like i don't really want to be at all like i'm suffering through something and also my my whole my whole per- perception about what we do is it, it really should come from a, pr- a place of honesty, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, also, it, like, if you don't want to be that character, do you know what I mean? If that's yeah. not what you want to put out in the world, because if, if you kept doing it, then you could really be typecast as sure. quite a nasty dude. Sure. That could, especially at the, the beginning of, or in my introduction into the mainstream. But that wasn't really the case. Hey, I, I just... For me, it was, it was the mental, my mental health really came at the forefront because I'm like, I'm not a doctor with like a, a blunt scalpel, dude. Mm. I am the scalpel, you know. Interesting. I'm not like a, I'm not a mechanic with tools that, you know, a little screwdriver that's bent. No, I'm bent. I am the screwdriver. So if I keep screwing myself up, how much long of a career, yeah. of a career am I going to have? Yeah, and, that, and that's what I mean by, you know, the help once at some level of, of entertainment career is mm. like, how, how do you do it for the long haul? Because yeah, man. you can imagine it's very similar to a, a musician where if you go hard and you party hard, like you're not going to make it. You're not going you to survive. And like, I heard you can, but, uh, but the, uh, the ones that are surviving, yeah. it's interesting. I, I had a conversation uh, the other day with someone who was a, a, an entertainment lawyer and they said that, the the people who have had these long careers, yeah. pretty much all of them are the nicest people. Right. And he's like, the worst people to deal with are these new these folk new, that, yeah. that just don't, they haven't survived. Why is that so though? Because I just think they ha- the, the people who have had these long careers have had them 
for a reason. Right. Because they've looked after themselves. Yeah. Because they've honored relationships and because they know what it takes to go the distance. Sure. They've, they've ridden many waves as opposed to just on this one that, you know, is exciting, but there's many more to come. <laughs> yeah, man, there's so much more to come. And, and that's what gave me the confidence to kind of... Because um, as I said, people will get tired of you or yeah. could potentially yeah, get yeah. tired of you. Absolutely. People could build some kind of a relationship and think you're a certain kind of person. And you then know. you've got to reinvent that. Ah. So it's interesting. No, so okay. I'm, I'm happy where I am. I've done... I've, I've, uh, I took my break. I... I gave myself time and yeah next year is very exciting I've, I've been shooting a bunch of projects you know getting yeah, busy we, with I want to talk about it I mean the one credit which <laughs> certainly looks amazing on the IMDB profile which I'd love to chat about is The Woman King yeah um, uh, who were you in The Woman King I was Boma 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 was um, the did you have a nice part I, I've watched the film I loved it yeah um, I don't think i would have recognized you at the time yeah yeah so we were there was the makeup was excellent they won awards for it but i had prosthetics and everything um i was the two ic the second in command to the bad guy nice yeah so whenever you saw cool the bad movie, guy yeah. I, would, I, I would be with him oh cool i yeah. must now now that now yeah, that I'm, go i've got a refresher <laughs> on your face i must go and watch it yeah. when i watched that i was like this is this is such an important film yeah man and everybody needs to watch it especially like Young brown girls. Yes. Every young brown girl anywhere yes. in the world needs yes. to watch this. Yes. Just to see figures that are strong, yeah. that are leaders, that can, you know, run shit and be strong. Oh, it was great. Dude, representation Fuck, it was good. is like the most, one of the most important things when you put stuff out. I mean, that's why Necktie Youth was so successful because it represented a very small niche in the ocean, you know. Uh, yeah. Like, I talk like this, I'm a black, affluent, call me a coconut, you know, South African, you know. Sure. So the representation for us was quite small before yeah. Sibs, you know, did what he did. And, yeah, something like Woman King, I feel does that on a global scale. Yeah. You know. And uh, just little moments like when she, I don't want to give too much away, but quick back of the box, it's about a young girl growing up, going through the, throes of becoming one of these um elite uh female warriors that this right, tribe has right, right. and uh we follow a young uh tuso Mbeda, um yeah. who's amazing she's amazing south african actress who um you know is joining this elite um, warrior force mm. and of course there is this subplot of her falling in some kind of a love or having a relationship with one of the slave traders yeah but what I love about it is that it's not like she gives up her life no. for the dude. Mm. And even in this sort of scene that would be a typical, like, he takes her in her arms. She, you know, he puts out her ha his hand to, like, help her. And she doesn't even take it. Nah. You know, she, d she does it on her own. Yeah. And there's all these, like, small, subtle little moments that just make it amazing. Okay, well, I mean, that's cool. And that's, that should hopefully lead to lots of things. Yeah. It's just such a nice... Um, thing to have done i mean I, one of my favorite international films would have been the mauritanian yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I saw that you were, that you did that that's cool um yeah i spent a day with benedict cumberbatch oh nice doing scenes with with him you know we ran a we, we had a scene together in the film things like that for me dude i mean was I that guess, the, was that the shoot where he got hijacked did he get hijacked? <laughs> There's a story. There's a story of him um, shooting somewhere in rural South Africa. Right. And him going, no, I can, I can go somewhere and do something. And of course, you're often advised against it. Mm. And then often people are like, oh, that's over-exaggerating. Yeah. But he was in a car somewhere and they got hijacked. Damn. A hijacking is hectic, though. <laughs> it is hectic. It's never happened to me. But I, I know it know. happened. That, feels, that sounds shady, bro. Something happened. He, or he got like, yeah, I got like abducted. For how a would you? Or how something. would you hijack a car and by, like, a crazy coincidence, it happens to be freaking. Imagine turning around and being <laughs> Doctor like, oh Strange. My God, <laughs> Doctor Strange is in the back seat. Whoa, Doctor Strange, is that you? I'm sorry, <laughs> bro, but I just need the phone. <laughs> Funny. No, okay, I, maybe I, it wasn't. I don't know, but I, I know, know that story, happened while he was in South Africa. I mean, yeah, I think he did mention that he's. It's not his first time in South Africa. I mean, this was okay. what, 2019. He mentioned it wasn't his first time. He has friends in Cape Town, da 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 da. da so. Br British British folk tend to be a lot more connected to South Africa. Fair game, it's yeah. The, it's the Americans that 
we're, we're like aliens to Got them. You. Because the British, obviously, through our colonial history, but also in the Commonwealth, we, you know, we play rugby and mm. cricket together. And so, like, the idea of South Africa and where it is is not it's foreign not, to them. It's not yeah. too foreign for, a, for a Brit. A okay. crazy story, though, was um, when we're shooting the professionals with Brendan Fraser, Tom Welling, he plays uh, mm. Clark Kent in Smallville. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We shot that. And some men. Yeah. So apparently, wait. So you were involved in that? Yeah, I was in that yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So apparently, look, all the crew was Cape Town crew for some funny reason. Sure. We were shooting in Machali's here in Joburg, and the, most of the crew were Cape Town. So apparently, the the shoot was supposed to happen in Cape Town. The weather wasn't according to script, so they had to move it to Joburg. So Bre- apparently, uh, Brendan Fraser, uh, George of the Jungle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. He's He's driving around with a driver from Cape Town in Johannesburg. Yeah. And their base camp was Mary Fitzgerald Square. So apparently upon their exit, the driver, he got lost in those dingy parts yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of town. Yeah, yeah. And like, and what? your <laughs> accent changes. Yeah, and, yeah. and Brendan's got like his phone out with the window rolled down. Yeah. And then, come on. Did it get nicked? Yeah, of course. Imagine that phone... Imagine who you could phone. <laughs> like, dude, imagine the contacts on that thing. Imagine the people you could phone. When was this? This was 2017, 18, I think. Bro. How cool would it have been to just, you know, be blooming through Newtown and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, that's Brendan Fraser. Like Brendan Fraser. I mean, the Oaks, Okay, yeah. did, you, did you have much time with him? Yeah, yeah, we had tons of, we had a couple of scenes together. I mean, they had one, it was a series, eight parts or 10 parts. This is called The Professional. Uh, the official title is called Professionals. Professionals. Yeah, it's a remake of The Professionals. Okay. Like a seventies show back. Where in the is 70s. Pro- where is it? Is it on anywhere? Bro, I I, I had to like find bad ways. Go to find go, it. go yeah. on the 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 seas. Yeah. Um. So it was obviously for some TV channel somewhere that some you don't TV get. channel in 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 the US or okay. in uh, some parts of Europe. Okay. Yeah. But we never got it. Okay. No, we never got it. Um. We did actually played on ETV last year sometime. Okay. Yeah. What was Brendan Fraser like? Brendan was cool. He was, he felt, I mean, I want to say this as respectfully as possible. He felt, he looked tired. Mm. Yeah, he looked exhausted. Must have been, you know, it was an action type of series. But yeah, man, he looked tired. You have know, you, but it was a cool, he was cool. He was very happy to chat with us. But I mean, he'd always have moments where he would yeah. um, be on his own. Interesting. Yeah. Have you seen The Whale? I have not seen the world. You should. I should. I know. Just as a as a testament to to acting, oh, it's a it. We were talking about it. It's very much an an actor's film. Oh. You know when photos are enough, or like trailers are enough, or or reviews are enough, and it's like wow. Yeah. Um, but I, I I have to watch it. It it, it feels like you're watching a play. Wow. So that's why you'd appreciate it. Um, wow. as a, have as you a seen a film called The Taxidermist? No. It's an art house film called The Taxidermist. It reminds me a lot about the, when I see the whale stuff. It's also okay. about like a, an overweight gentleman. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay, well, let's do something which we like to do here, which is we, we, we journey through your life. Because right. I also want to get to know you um, in, in that regard. Um, we ask you some, some questions as, as we go, which is about your relationship to film. Sure. So the first question is, is where, you, where did you grow up? I grew up in the south of Joburg. Nice. In a suburb called Robertson. Yeah. 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 I got family. Uh, my, my mom grew up in Mondio. Nice, bro. Mondio. Yeah, Mondio. <laughs> I, li- I live in Winchester, so my folks are just down the road. Yeah, I'm a south, yeah, I'm a south, south boy. South, uh, it's, a, it's a little tougher. Yeah. It's a little tougher that side of Joburg. <laughs> I grew up in the north. Oh, yeah. You're um, fucking smooth. But yeah? I, dated, uh, I dated someone for many years who, who lived in the south, and I got a good taste of it. Lebanese? It's, it's, no, no. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so around that time growing up, when you are young and primary school, yeah, um, we have something which we like to ask, which is what was your puppy love film? And what we mean by that is your the relationships you were to have at that time, five, six, seven, would be, you know, you'd be excited to hold someone's hand yeah. or you'd, you'd passing love letter notes. And right. so curious to know whether there, were, whether there was a film around that time that was like your first film, that's your first love. First film, first love is The Lion King. Okay. Lovely. Yeah, that's the first film I learned word for word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Word. When when I watched the remake, um, 
you just realize how perfect the first one was. Yeah, dude, it doesn't hit the spot like the first one. And I used to say, because when you're young, you're more like your they say your brain is a sponge and you're susceptible mm. to you know things when you're younger. But I was like, no, I can watch it now. Like right now, when I leave, I can watch it and like still enjoy it. Yeah, no, it is timeless. Yeah. And also, yeah, speaking of representation, it was a chance for all of us to feel like they made the film for us. Yeah. Because we've also, you know, we're familiar with these animals. We yeah. know the bush. Funny, yeah, it was the first Disney film to not have any humans in it. Beautiful. Yeah. That was an excellent movie. Okay. And then, then li- live action would be the, the mask. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. So that, that, that exposed you, what, to a bit of, a bit of acting? Did it, did it start planting a seed yeah. that, you know, I can be characters? Yeah. And I can play the fool a bit? Were, were, were you, did you want to be a comedic actor? Not really, dude. So if, if you just track it, right? So when the Lion King, can you just imagine a kid who's like obsessed over this little cassette, right? Like every day. The, the VHS. The VHS, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to calculate now. Probably that's where my accents and things came from because I could speak it like the thing without before I learned English. Oh, interesting. Right? So I could repeat, I could re- repeat the things. Yeah. Um, which was like, I think, a weird thing. But when it came to Jim Carrey, I mean, pet detective, bro, Ace Ventura. Yeah, yeah. But his also, output in that, it was only like a few years that he put out all those movies. Right. It was quite a, like, it was quite a time for the dude. No, he was, he was, he was amazing, dude. And that, that for me, I could say kind of sparked a little thing of like entertaining and because he used to do the weirdest things. Yeah. Um, no, he, yeah. He, his, his face was, was rubber in so yeah. many regards. Okay, cool. Uh, that, that's interesting. Then you, you get over to high school. Things get a little more serious. Yeah. The love is still as deep as real, but True. perhaps it's a little more dangerous or mm. perhaps it's a bit – you're experimenting with other things that you're perhaps seeking out as opposed to – the films that got given to you when you were young. Right. Um, this is the High School Crush film. High School Crush. Eight Mile. Ooh. Look, Eight Mile came out when I was in grade seven, though, so I don't know if that counts, but we were... High school. Like, you know, if it's high school, then... No, grade seven is, is primary school, but like... Oh, I'm still a standard dude. Sorry. No, standard... What is it? Standard five. So it's the last, okay. last grade of... Okay, I mean, but was, that's it, still the start of the crushing yeah. period. Yeah. Okay. A little sex scene here and there. It's a know? weird sex scene. It's a weird sex scene. and It's an interesting sex scene. Sorry, just yeah. to talk about it yeah. specifically. Which like, one? The train one or the, the first one? The, the scene where old uh, rabbit sort of that has sex with her in that like factory yeah, the, yeah, by the train. I mean, yeah. Sorry, now yeah, by the train. It, it's, like, it's, yeah, it's a weird true. scene and it shows you, it probably showed many people that like, you know, sex isn't this... Very sweet, yeah. romantic, perfect, candlelit, yeah. you know, love making. Like yeah. that was that was that was it was it was awkward and odd. Mm. And mm. Brittany Murphy was incredible. Yeah, she was great. It was quite a, it was quite an alarming mm. scene. And Anyways. it happened so fast. And you're just like, what the fuck did I just watch? Yeah, and that's when yeah. you also realize, like, d- dudes, sometimes only last two minutes, <laughs> and that is okay. And that is okay. <laughs> You'll live another day, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Eight Oft- eight. Often it's it's as short as that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, but that, okay, what did that help with? Or what did that do for you? So, look, I always wanted to be a performing. rapper. Yeah, performing. I wanted to be a rapper um, before 8 Mile. And 8 Mile was like, it came at the time where I was still figuring it out. And it, it, it felt like this affirmation that's like, yeah, even the movies are saying, you can do it. You can do this. Bro. Yeah. You know? Okay, so a life of music was, was, was on the cards for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I did. I didn't start acting till very late in my life, bro. Okay. Yeah. So m- music was was taking a lead at one point. Music and art, you know, because yeah. I went to an art school. Uh, I, 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 my first year of varsity was at a was at a design school. Yeah, oh, things cool. would have been very different for me. Okay. If, um, yeah, if things didn't happen the way they did. But yeah, so I wanted to be a rapper. You know, I, I made tons of music till you know probably made them track earlier this year as well oh still cool something. it's nice to keep doing it yeah absolutely still something sibs and i actually also make music together you know so oh right yeah so it's something we it's a gene that we we, we try to keep 
and massage as we go. It is it is a it is a muscle. Yeah, it's a muscle. You um, that's something I've I've very much learned over my years of being in this indie rock band. Yeah. It's What's your band's name? Short Straw. Short Straw? You in Short Straw? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Russell's been chilling and interviewing me. No, man. I, I, men- <laughs> I mentioned it often on the show, so it's, not a, it's certainly not a surprise. Okay, wow. Sorry if it was a surprise to you. It's an honor. Uh, <laughs> but no, when we, when we go into an album, when we're writing and preparing stuff, you, you, it very much feels like a muscle you got to warm up. Right. And you the throw beginning a lot of things along weird, the way, shaky. And yeah, yeah, and and you and you got to nurse it, and you got to, yeah. The best stuff comes after, you know, really putting a lot of stuff out. Yeah, I would. I'd go as far as saying, for artists, like um, we really work within a zone, mm. and you can overshoot it or undershoot it, but it's really a balance of caffeine, nerves. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's but like people think it's this. You know, and it's sure it, it, in many ways, a lot of it is this kind of innate God given talent. But, sure. But sometimes people give that a little too much credit yeah. where it, it, it comes with a lot of practice. Yes. It's a and a lot of warming up of those muscles. Absolutely. Okay. So then you go off to this design school. Um, this is the sort of varsity. You're becoming an adult. Your relationships at the time are involving perhaps sleeping over, perhaps mm-hmm. moving in. Yeah. Um, this is the It's Getting Serious film. Curious to know if you've got one of those. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think because we were quite wild back then. So I... Sometimes it is wild. <laughs> those are the, these are the, often the wildest films because these yeah. are the people that, you know, now you're over 18, mm. um, you're out and about. So perhaps give it a think and if, if it comes to you. Yeah, I'm trying to think. And of course, we can always cut this. I mean, there's a break. <laughs> yeah. There was, you know, we were into Art House a lot back then. Um, a friend of mine gave me this. An anime. Mm. And Naruto. I mean, Naruto took me from like high school all the way into this recently. You know. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, we watched a lot of uh, anime. Um, but film-wise, I'm trying to think. What no, but really... TV shows as well. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not necessarily just film. But um, what, what, some of the, what were some of those Art House films that stuck out? The Taxidermist, I was telling you about the Taxidermist, okay. it was really cool. Um, oh, titles are just escaping me at the moment. No, it's cool. Um, so then, um, then, then, yeah, then you, you get your, your career going. Then we have a, we have, we've got two other questions, which I think are, could be interesting then. The one is um, your uh, Settle Down film. Because you, uh, at one point in your life, you know, you've stopped experimenting and perhaps this is the film you're now going to marry. This is the one that you're happy to, to watch for the rest of your life. <laughs> Interstellar, dude. Ah, oh, cool. Inter fucking Stella. I just can't. I just, I just can't get over it. Interesting. And I want to bring something up. You said um, after this you are having a checkup for a newborn baby. Right. Okay. Three-week-old baby. Three weeks. Well, two weeks and That's two amazing. days. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you, bro. They've only seen, they've only seen like a couple of nights. Yeah, I I, I held um, a baby recently on the day that it was born, and I was like, "You haven't even seen nighttime yet. Nothing. You don't even know what the night looks like. Right. Like, right. Fuck. No, no, dude. They're so precious. Is this your so first young. child? This is my first child. Why? Why I'm bringing it up is mm. it's interesting that you've chosen a film like Interstellar, which is obviously amazing on so many levels. The film by Christopher Nolan, but at the core of it mm. is about a, a guy's relationship with his, his daughter. daughter. Yeah. Uh, is your child a male or a female? It's a female. Yeah. She's a girl. So interesting. Yeah. That, and, and Interstellar will now take on a completely new level of love for you yeah. as you raise this, this daughter of yours. Wow. And I wonder how much of the film, like deep latently, you know, will... Um, will inform how I treat her. Sure. No, it's, it's, it's an amazing film and it's an amazing, yeah, testament to the love of, of the father and the daughter. Do- oh, God. It's a great film. Okay, so that's interesting that yeah. that's, your, that's your forever film. Yeah, man. Did, uh, you, did you like Oppenheimer? Have you seen I it? I have not seen Oppenheimer yet. I had a chance this weekend and, yeah, it was just too hectic. Yeah. I want to watch it. No, I mean, his, uh, his uh, stuff's amazing. Go, yeah. Going back to that period, that, that more, uh, your, your experimental art house period yeah 
Um, I'm curious to know whether you watched uh, Memento. I watched Memento. Okay. I, oh, I, I, Which I, is Christopher Nolan's back, kind of first film. First film. So I went back to Memento. See what I did there? Yeah. Yeah. So I went hey. back to Memento after, um, after Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because those, those films like Memento, if they hit you in your... I'm shaping my personality kind yeah, of young, phase you, he's cool, <laughs> art house craze. Like, fuck, that's a cool film to come along. Yeah. Because it really, it changes the form of cinema and storytelling. It's very experimental in its, in its layout. So yeah. It's a very one-of-a-kind film that people should check out. Absolutely. And I think he's just been re, I wouldn't say reinventing that format, but he's just been kind of digging into, into the, the essence and the core of that, of that time just playing with yeah. time and the idea of time. Of time, yeah. I mean, I, what did you think about Tenet? I haven't seen it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember it, you know, him pushing through to say, I want to release this film despite the pandemic. But I think I was just so busy with the move of, sure. of moving the bioscope from Mabuneng to um, 44 Stanley at that time that I never watched it on the big screen. And then I've kind of missed it. Gotcha. I, 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 need, I want to watch it. Check it out. I watched it, I watched it in cinemas. Yeah, it's it's a higher grade version of what he was trying to do. It seem, yeah, from the response from people, it seems like it was perhaps a little too yeah, little too. And this is someone who own ass. This is yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is someone who like who's claimed Interstellar as their favorite movie ever, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think Interstellar was probably the perfect balance. Oh, so sweet of of very smartness mm. with emotion with emotion mm. and a storytelling. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've got one other question, which is, um, what was the film you were perhaps too young to see when it got shown to you at the time and it kind of scarred you a bit? <laughs> Do you have one of those? Uh, like, it's often a horror and it's often like an older family member like forces you to watch it. Or Dracula. Okay. Yeah. The Keanu Reeves one. Bab, uh, with Gary Oldman, yeah, the dude with the like boob head, yeah, 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 with the boob, with the with the boob head, yeah, with that's the a wide, weird movie. That was a, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? And I, and because it's I just, weird on multiple levels, yeah. like way too much sex than there should be, and I was just like, what the hell is this? I and think. Keanu Reeves has a weird accent that probably taught you what not to do, what not to do <laughs> in terms of characters. Yeah, but he redeemed himself for me in um in Constantine. Yeah, very much. So. Yeah, I think Constantine, I would put it just above. Neo. Neo's a great job. I mean, The Matrix was excellent. Yeah. But um, just that, that constant teen character with the cigarettes and just like the no, low it's a, life. It's a very it's, cool. He's, he's excellent. And it was the start of that anti-hero kind of superhero character that yeah. is not, it's, it's not a pristine, you know, Superman. And I think he does it best. Yeah. I mean, Will Smith did try in uh, Hancock. Apparently the original intent of Hancock was better than what finally came out. Okay. There was a cut and a version that was far more R-rated. Okay. And everyone was like, guys, this is Will Smith. This we is Will. Yeah, we, he's we got, got kids. Make, got we got to make this more PG and then they, they apparently cut it to be a bit more a bit more family friendly. Another crazy one is that Will Smith was supposed to play Neo. Yes. Have you heard him talk about those, those yeah. original... Um, interviews that he had with the two yeah and he went to go shoot the wild wild west right yeah 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 <laughs> well done bro <laughs> that's what I mean dude it's like it's uh, like what we were speaking about earlier it's easy not easy like great you've got into the game but then you've got to keep it up and you've got to make the right decisions you've got to make the right moves because now more than ever people are proposing things to you right and building stuff around you and you could spend way too long doing the wrong project and just folding yourself into this uh, typecast. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but speaking on that, w what were some of the other things that you got coming out? Is there stuff that you can talk about? Yeah, sure. Um, I've got a project. I can't just. I can't say the the uh, streamer. Yeah. Or the channel. Mm. But it's on DSTV. Okay. If you go towards the kids stuff there. Okay. It's not Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. It's the other one. Okay. Yeah. The one with the mouse. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a project coming out with them. Um, it's called Kia and the Komoja Heroes. Yeah. I saw that it's, it is listed in the upcoming section of your IMDb. Right. So there is some level of it out. Yeah. And that, and so that's a kid's show. That's a kid's show. Also play a girl dad. I play the lead's dad. Oh, Kia. cool. 
Um, which is great, man. We, we, You're settling into your daddom. Right, dude. Who knew? <laughs> and this was all before. Such you a know. far cry from, from you and that cool coat and necktie. You. Right. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, but that's cool. You're evolving. And I think that's great that you man. can now be these dads more now. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy, dude, Like that I could still become someone else. Or not become someone else, but like evolve within... Yeah. Uh, the sphere of the arts and, and, and what I what I do. Okay, so when is that coming out? Do you know? That comes out on the tenth of September. Which oh. is this weekend, right? Which is which is close. This week on to the next one. Yeah. And then of course Headspace. Headspace is yeah, Headspace, Headspace. is gonna be out on the fifteenth. Friday yep. the fifteenth. So the week that this episode is coming out. Excellent. Uh, it'll be out this coming Friday. Yeah, and I think Headspace might play don't quote me. Uh, what do we have, what do you say? Allegedly, I think it, yeah. it might allegedly play on Mnet, right? Because it's 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 made by Mnet movies. Yeah, yeah. So I think there'll be a period of it yeah. in cinemas, but yes. I think I you know definitely these these animated films will live their best life once in the home. I think so because that's you know where so many kids are are, mm -hmm. are based, and it's quite hard to always get them out to cinemas. Um, and I know that it is going to be uh, very faithfully translated into different uh, languages, sure. South African languages, being a South African production. Excellent. So, so that, I think, will live its best life there. But watching it in cinemas is, is cool. So yeah, I mean, the cinema experience. Um, and enjoy that. Yeah, I love the cinema experience. And we need it now more than ever. Yeah, but it's been such a nice time for cinemas. Eh? With, with Oppenheimer and Barbie. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, it's so, so weird, cool though. that people are... Of going back and giving us so much love, and I think everyone's just being reminded of how special it is. Those yeah. moments can be right, and they obviously for specific films, and it's not going to happen all the time. But just being in that um, full cinema and just having that experience. I after the pandemic, the first film I watched in a full audience was a film, funny enough, in London. Yeah, there's a cinema called the Prince Charles. Okay, and it's very similar in its spirit to the bioscope where they'll do old movies and nice. sing-alongs and quote-alongs and culty stuff um but i went to watch everything everywhere all at once oh nice that was one of my also post lockdown post mm. yeah pandemic movies and that's the movie cinema. with gasps and laugh and heartfelt and it was just so cool to be in a full cinema again so good dude and just have have that kind of roller coaster of a film so good that film's so good they they cleaned up at the Oscars. Yeah, just, but it, they just so deserving. Yeah. Did you watch Barbie? No. Okay. <laughs> Not like, okay, that no was too strong. I know what you mean. Yeah, no, I haven't. But you would appreciate it. I... It's, made, it's made for you. It's made for us. It's made for anyone over 13 who's dismissed that world now and is a grown up. You'll like, appreciate it. Oh, Gosling's great. I love Ryan, dude. I no, love Ryan. The, the Ken character is phenomenal. What's that film he did with e uh, uh, Eva Mendes? Yeah, the place beyond the pines. Yeah, place beyond the pines was excellent. It was excellent in Driver. I mean, he, I, I took a lot I, from. I didn't his know they were side. married. Him and Eva Mendes. Right from that from movie, uh, place beyond the pines. And he yeah. said we had to pretend to be a family, and, and he, I couldn't pretend anymore. He, yeah, yeah. He said something like, "And I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to stop pretending." Right. It's such a great quote. <laughs> that's scary, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's scary. I think that gives. I mean, good for him, but that gives. Um, that gives actors yeah. a, a looseness in in at their in their work. Not sure. to say like, look, dude, love is love is a beautiful thing, and it can happen anyway. It can slap you in the face, but like, yeah. hey, dude, I'd I'd really like me and my co-star. Let's say you know, it's I'm married, or we're married, or we're in love, and we. I would really like to know that we've established some sort of boundaries. Yeah, I was about to say. So yeah. so in in the wife, um, you had to have this. Wife. This, this wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, dude. And I, 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 I say that speaking from that experience where, you know, people would come up to you and say, oh, you, so-and-so's person, like, oh, Somo's person, Somo's person, and I'll be with my wife. Yeah, weird. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, that's scary. And what kind of boundaries did you guys set? Or, or like, how, how does it work? You, you guys just obviously are... Yeah, dude. Like, uh, to you no, know, to a great extent, I love acting because, like, um, the co-star and I were like on screen. We were supposed to be. I think it just worked from a screen perspective. Yeah. But the the in reality, we were like we were very chilled and casual. You know, yeah. she knew I had a wife. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, it, it, I think so much of it has to do with what you do when the cameras aren't rolling. Exactly. And I think if you if you do yeah spend too much time together or do you have yeah some instability in your own personal in your life, own personal life it, yeah. it could um, it could compromise uh, that which in turn compromises the screen chemistry. Yeah. But Malinta was chilled. I think no, that's for for most part you know she was in her own world. We had I had seven brothers in the show. Yeah. So if anything. Me and the gents got caught in this, like, we are really brothers. We're, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with, uh, with her and I, was like super chill, dude. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one last thing which I just wanted to chat about was something that was in the news. Yeah. Was, it, was about you eating someone else's food. Oh, my f- Really? That's it, still there. It, it came up. I'm just, what was the story? <laughs> there was a video that, that, that went viral of you eating someone's food. All right, so we're in Durban, right? <laughs> Because I might have a similar story. So I want to hear yours first and then right. I'll tell you mine. So we're in Durban. We've been invited to this club. It's like a day club. Yeah. Uh, myself and, you know, the cast members of the show. Because this show got so big, dude. Yeah. And we would just, would end up making money just going on these little tours or like appearances. Yeah. yeah. So we're in Durban. We're appearing at this place. It's packed. I'm hungry as fuck. Yeah. Right. So we're walking in. Everyone's like, yeah, taking photos. Everyone's like high-fiving us. And, nah, 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 nah. and then I had this thing of like, wow, everyone is here for me. Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> Which they were, well, me and yeah, the, the guys. Yeah, you were certainly the guests of honor. Yeah, I'm like, what would be the most special thing? Here? Because now we're, going, we're walking through this place and, I'm, and we're, they're going to put us in this VIP section there in the corner. Yeah. Almost like a zoo where like <laughs> yeah. a good view for everyone else to see, right? Yeah, yeah. And in my head, I was like, let me have a personal interaction with someone here. Yeah. You know, and I'm hungry. So I walked up to this lady and I was like, hey, what are you eating? Mm. She's like, uh, I think she had a pasta or something. I was like, can I have some? She's like, yeah, sure. Okay. And all of this got filmed. Dude, they're filming us from the, from the door. Yeah. Everyone's right? filming from multiple yeah. angles. Dude, there's yeah. so many angles of this yeah, thing. Yeah. And it just got misinterpreted. Oh, it did it? Yeah. Uh, oh, I dude, didn't know that was a bad thing. Oh, wow, dude. Okay. I got, I mean, there was a small faction of people who were like, oh, I would have loved it. But like, yeah, most were like, it's COVID. How the hell could he stick his food in oh, people's food? Was it oh. a COVID thing? Not even, dude. But, oh, but just the fact that you... Like some people, which I think, perhaps they felt jealous that it... It didn't happen to it them. It didn't happen. Dude, if... if, <laughs> if <laughs> Someone if, came over and ate their food. <laughs> I yeah. didn't eat her food. I, I asked to have a bite of and her food. And she consented. And she consented. She That's even... funny. The, the way they would like the media. Uh, oh, but people uh, love to take an angle. She she said, "Hey, okay, this guy came. He asked me. There was another angle from her friend at the table, and you can hear you can hear the yeah. audio and everything. Where it's like, it's a civil interaction. Like, hey, okay, but then this thing did. Yeah, this thing kind of blew up. Was can you see what I mean? Like the fame yeah. is kind of overwhelming now. It's yeah. like, whoa, I can't even do that. But for me, it was just a special moment to be like, hey, yeah, she can one day be like, hey, man, when yeah, I'm, that, I was that." Check that, yeah, that I was a check. He had, he had a. Um, it reminded me, and I just want to tell this quick story, yeah. and then, and then shame. I know you've got to get off to your doctor. But we've got to tell that other story first. Which other story? The poster story. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, on, okay, okay. Well, I just want to tell you the food eating <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I did this documentary exchange program where we went to Finland. Yeah. So we're in this completely new part of the world, and um, we realized we could take a day trip to Tallinn, which is the capital of Estonia, okay. the little little um, country there. Okay. Uh, and so we're wandering through the old town and we're trying to figure out what to eat. Mm. And I walk past uh, a restaurant where this outside section has got a little balcony and a, and a tiny little row of pot plants or something. But right. I'm very close to this table yeah. as we walk past of people yeah. eating. And I say something <laughs> like, ooh, this looks nice yeah. because I'm, I'm pointing at the food that these guys are eating. Mm. And this absolute stranger goes, it really is. Do you want some? Okay. And I was like, what? <laughs> sure. And he cut a piece of this meat <laughs> and gave it to me. And uh, now at this point, even though it was 10 seconds, a whole bunch of people were like, oh my God, this stranger is feeding another stranger. Yeah. <laughs> and I just said to everyone, I said, if this guy is having such a good time yeah. that he's willing to share his food, we are fucking eating we are gonna here. We're going to eat right here. <laughs> and we spent the whole day in this beautiful restaurant. That's in awesome. Tallinn, which is an interesting story. Yeah. Um, no, but as you uh, walked into the bioscope, you reminded me of a very interesting story, and we'll and we'll end on this. Yeah, which is uh, we have a bunch of block mounted posters that we have. Uh, we, the the old bioscope was full of them because mm. we really loved um, 
putting up all the films and everything that the bioscope had done. Um, but one of the films uh, that has remained in, since our move, because obviously we can't put all the posters up, right. is Necktie Youth, just yeah. simply because I think it's one of the coolest posters. And so we really kept the, the coolest ones for the new cinema. Um, and as you walked <laughs> in, you, 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 you reminded me of a moment. What was that moment? Okay, I'll tell it from my point of view, right? Okay, cool. And where it ends, you can carry on because obviously yeah. there was there's something that happened afterwards. So it was the... It was one of the... So we had a premiere. Yeah. We had a screening of Necktie Youth. It was just a normal little screening. Because, yeah, as I it said... It was out of the season, right? When, when Necktie Youth was able to do a run at the Bioscope, we did a run. Because, as I said, sure. this was a film that was perfect for the Bioscope. Yeah. Okay, so you came to one of those. I came to one of those. I mean, we had been... We've done a lot of them, and I think I had come watch one at the Bioscope. Okay. But this one was like... I think I just had a, a friends with me that hadn't seen it, and I was like, okay. hey, fuck, let's go watch this film. And Sibs asked me, just like, if you're around, come just do this little Q&A. So we watch the film. I, I walk out. I see this. Uh, we're all here for Necktie Youth. It's not like there's many films. It's not a festival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're here for Necktie Youth. And I think you guys put it somewhere special. Yeah, we put this block-mounted poster in a, in a strategic place because yes. we were now screening the yes, film. Yes, where you can like, ha ah. As the lead of the film, <laughs> I was like, ah. I need a souvenir. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. from touring with this film, I've never come across a nice one like this. Yeah. And I literally like, I take the fucking, I take <laughs> it the, off the wall. I take the poster off the wall. Yeah. And I were like, I walk out with it, bro. No one stopped me. No, because uh, if you do anything with purpose, you can get away with it. You can things. get away with it. The internet's full of people going like, if you just walk in with a ladder, you can go anywhere. True. So I saw that the video of those things. <laughs> but I, I, I took a bunch of photos with people outside, you know, like... Um, with the poster. With the poster, a bunch of, I wouldn't <laughs> say fans, but fans of the film, you know. Yeah. And with my friends. And I shared one to Sibs. Yeah. And... Well, I, I saw one of those pictures. You, did, did I post it? I, I just saw it. I think you might have tagged me or whatever. And then I tagged I came, the bias goal. Yeah. And then I came to work the next day. <laughs> And uh, this is my version of the story. Right. Where I was like, where's the fucking necktie youth poster, guys? And they were like, what do you mean? And I was like, where is it? It's gone. And then I saw the picture and I was like, the bro fucking stole the poster. <laughs> and I like messaged Sibs and I was like, hey, man, can we get the poster back? <laughs> yeah. But you could tell and since like, I posted it, like, I, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It no, was no, all... no. And Sibs was like, don't worry, I'll get it back. <laughs> yeah, there was no ill intent. No, I um, no, no. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't a bad thing. It was no, because you know, as as we traveled, there were things you could take. Sometimes there were T-shirts, there were posters. No, know. totally. Yeah. Listen, and I'm I'm I have a chest full of mementos from yeah. my life. So yeah, uh, maybe one or two of those were things I shouldn't have taken. But I I, I totally get it. It's cool, and um, I, I wish uh, I had another poster that I could block mount and give to you. No but, worries, bro. But uh, it lives on. Anytime someone. Uh, comes to the bioscope as you get to the cafe section look it's to right your left yeah. uh, and you'll see this this the poster yeah <laughs> but duty thank you thank, thank you, you for your time thank you Russell. um well done on headspace i think it's exciting and it's cool that it's been been made and yeah. your accent is awesome <laughs> thank you thank you thanks to and you. it was just nice getting to know you it was nice to um yeah just um get behind the scenes yeah, um hear the hear your um your, your career and the films that you loved thank you bro thank, thank you for your you. time and, and all the best with this young uh, this young daughter man oh hope, yeah man hope the checkup is good yeah no, here's, here's to a, a healthy happy bubba thank you my friend Magic, thank you man. okay chat soon alright peace bye alright what a nice chat what a lovely dude he's so great everyone around him b building up to the uh to the interview happening, everyone everyone's had such nice things to say about him, mm. which always which always is a lovely indicator to me about someone. Yeah, to what other people say about you. Totally. And if everyone's got good things to say, that 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 is weighted heavily in my book. Of course. Uh, welcome to the cash up, everyone. Um, now that our customers have come and we've had ourselves a nice busy day, this is a chance for myself and Cole to do a little bit of admin, talk mm. a little shit. Yeah. And also balance the tool as we cash up at the end of the day. So this is a chance for us to also, yeah, balance things, right the wrongs. If mm. anything was um, unsure in the chat itself or if any facts got wrong, 
um, it's our chance to also correct ourselves. <laughs> which happens uh, often. Which does happen. So one thing that was glaringly obvious was whether or not that time that Bonko shot uh, with Benedict Cumberbatch was the time that this unfortunate thing happened. Uh, did you know about this Incident with I remember ben, reading Benedict a Cumberbatch. headline like long ago. So in 2005, he oh. was shooting a TV show called To the End of the Earth in South Africa. They, they, were, they had a day of scuba diving and then they were going somewhere on some path um, where he was advised that it wasn't safe. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. And he actually got kidnapped. So I guess they were maybe trying what? to take him somewhere to draw money to take money. I don't think they knew who he was because yeah. this is also before he's Doctor Strange and before Sherlock and Oaks in rural Natal I don't think mm-hmm. necessarily know the career Probably of, not. of Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, it's like indie British actors. But he was tied up by his like shoelaces. He was put in a boot. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> it sounds horrible. And it's such a bad like advert. It's, it's like most America. of us have been here for our entire lives and that's never, never happened to us. I've never been put in a boot. Wow, dude. I'm so sorry, Benedict. So, yeah, that that was your experience. That. It's probably but, never coming back now. Oh. You know, he's like in like the expats that leave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they no. just and he's, yeah, he's, say he's, bad things. He, he's not going to be on any tourism board. No. <laughs> Welcome to South Africa. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully he, it's he gets it. Oh, that's lame. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, lovely chat. Um, let's get into a few things. Yeah. You uh, got sent out to go and watch The Nun 2. Yeah. So, last week. Kind of excited to put this on the new releases shelf this week. Cool. Uh, just because, um, yeah, it's an extension of the Conjuring universe, their own yes. little cinematic universe. So, you went to a pre release screening, so mm. you got a chance to see it before everyone else. It is now in cinemas. Yes, it is now in cinemas. Okay. I, I, I don't watch a lot of horror. Really? I, I don't need that in my life. So many adults are saying that to me nowadays. <laughs> I, th- I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's like when you pass 30, I think that you're too aware of the real bad things that happen to people in life. <laughs> and you're just like, you see someone suffering, you're like, I've seen that before. I've seen family members die of cancer, blah, 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 blah. And then like when you're a kid, horror feels naughty and fun. Yeah. But then when you're an adult, it's like, it's a little bit too close to home, which is weird. Maybe. But then again, it, it this depends is, on the horror. Yeah. So what, what is The Conjuring? I mean, I know I've heard the name, but what is The Conjuring Universe? So it's based around the, in inverted commas, true story of the Warrens, a couple of exorcists that roamed America, uh, I don't know, like in the 70s or 80s or 90s sometime, okay. and would go around and fight these paranormal forces and expel demons from How many like, Conjuring movies were there? Do you know? There were three Conjuring movies and then... All the demons within that, I think, have like since had a few spin-offs, like the Annabelle series, or now Valak in the Nun. You know. Okay. Mm. All right. So the Nun is part of this Conjuring universe. Yes. Yeah, so the Nun first need- featured in the Conjuring Two as the main antagonist. Okay. Yeah. Do you, so do you need to have watched all these other things? Um, I would say no, because part of the problem with the movie is that it's very generic horror. Okay. In terms, if you were like watch the genre and you engage with it a lot, it's kind of Catholic horror to the book, right? What is a Catholic horror? It's just a horror themed around Catholicism. Okay. You know? Um, and I think that The Nun 2 very much does take place after and because of The Nun 1. Okay. But I think there's enough context within The Nun 2, you know, enough flashbacks, enough callbacks to what happened in The Nun 1 okay. for you to not have to watch it, you know? Because... You know, it's it's okay. But oh. I think that's um, the cool thing that they did at the screening was that they had two guys dressed in nun costumes with black masks. Yeah, okay. I saw that footage of you on the red carpet. Yeah, but they were in the screening and they were walking up and down the aisle and sitting next to people. <gasps> cool. So it's always then, nice when they, when, when they go a little extra further. So this yeah. is Empire Entertainment, yeah. who's one of the big distributors of films in South Africa. Just going a little extra, little extra step. miles. Hilarious. You would hear a yelp at the front of the cinema because the nun sat next to this woman and then like turned its head to look at her. And oh, would, that's ah! cool. And it would happen at a moment where Claudia, my friend, went with me and then she just tapped me on the shoulder while we we're watching the movie. It's like, oh, God, fuck, fuck. And then that's I looked awesome. down the aisle and the nun, like five seats ahead, 
had its nut, its head turned. It was looking directly at us. It was kind of eerie. Okay. So, yeah, it um, was a lovely touch. Well done, Empire. Yeah, well, speaking of Empire, the other film is um, A24's Talk To Me, which, as we said at the start of the day, we have been given some tickets to give away, which is very mm. cool and exciting. And it's also very cool and exciting to see engagement and have people leave comments on our Instagram post We've made a special post. Uh, you can see it very clearly in our Instagram page. It says, attention all customers, because we're mm. trying to get everyone's attention. Everyone who's out there browsing our, our video store, we want their attention. And we want you to leave a comment tagging someone who you want to take to the screening. Because mm. in the week of this episode coming out... Um, we are doing a special screen. Well, we are attending a special screening of Talk to Me the day before it comes out. So that's on the 14th of mm. September, Thursday the 14th, because Talk to Me is coming out on the 15th. It's good that we get all this admin right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and A A24 is a distribution company who have earned themselves such a great reputation for making for f- making and releasing. Very cool stuff. Yeah. And I think in this day and age where just so much gets put out, I think we are going to value the curators more and more. Exactly. And the people that um, are treasuring what they actually put out and making that part of their brand, mm. making sure that whatever they put out is, is, is of a particular kind of value to a very particular kind of audience. Mm. And the horror itself, talk to me, looks... Um, fucking scary. Yeah, but it look it's got it's got a psychological tip to it. It's got a cool indie tip to it. Yeah, it it doesn't look like as you said with the nun a typical Catholic horror. Whatever yeah, like, you kind of expect that to be. Within this year, we've had the Pope's <clears throat> Exorcist and the Nun too, which are essentially pretty much the same thing. You yeah. Know? So, so this one looks a little different. It's about a bunch of kids at a party. And yeah. there's this kind of Ouija board type hand. thing, this hand. And if you touch the hand, what and happens? And say, talk to me. And say, talk to me. You open the, as the Christians would say in my past, you would open a spiritual doorway. Oh, God. And then the demon would possess you. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a whole bunch of kids doing something really naughty, like glassy glassy or a Ouija board. That kind of stuff freaked me out as a kid. No, I didn't you, go near it. You, you, you heard about that as a thing. When yeah. you were especially like a God-fearing, like young kid. I yes. remember hearing about glassy, glassy. It sounded fucking so spooky. Yes. So it's amazing that in 2023, we can still be having these kinds of rituals that could still feel scary. Yeah. So, so yeah, we want to do this kind of stuff more and more. Whenever a distributor's given us tickets to give away, we want to um, put it out to our audience, have you guys... Um, earn yourself a spot and then we want to hang out with you so um this thursday we're going to get together at um rosebank we, we're all based in in joburg so we, we're going to we'll be there physically at the joburg screening at um oh, it's going to be at santon it's clinical santon oh did they change it no no it's it was always going to be did at i read santon. the email yeah, like yeah, an yeah. idiot okay. yeah so My this apologies. thursday is at santon okay um uh but we also there also is a screening in Cape Town, which people can win tickets for. So Amazing. Um, you might be in either cities. one. But if you join us um, in the Joburg screening, we want to hang out and get to know you guys and also see what you guys think afterwards mm. and have ourselves a little hang, which mm. I think is going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Um, another thing that we're doing this week, uh, tomorrow we're going to go watch A Haunting in Venice, wonderful. which we, we spoke about at the start. Um, so we don't know what that is going to be like yet. No, but we're very excited. That's 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 something coming out also on the fifteenth. Yeah. Uh, so fifteenth seems to be a very heavy day for releases. Yeah, exactly. You've got Talk to me. You've got a haunting in Venice, and you've got on a whole other spectrum. You got Bonkos film. You got Headspace coming out for the family. Yeah, exactly. Too. So a good week for us. Yeah. Um, and then for those that don't know. The back of the box on A Haunting in Venice Ooh, is that it's about it. part three of Kenneth Branagh's adaptation. Is that, did I pronounce his name correctly? I just always say Branner. Branner. Yeah, I suppose Kenneth that Brenner. makes sense. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's him as Poirot. Yes, exactly. The Agatha Christie detective, the Agatha Christie Sherlock 
always solving murder mysteries. Yeah, the world's greatest detective, and he's that beautiful snore. Yeah, he's brought these famous books back to life in very beautiful films. They've all looked incredible. Yeah, um, the first was Murder on the Orient Express. Mm. Um, then there was Death on the Nile, which all I just what I love, and I've said this before, I love the fact that. Same as the mouse trap. All these famous Agatha Christie whodunits mm. are some of the best kept secrets in the sense that the world knows about them. They've been going for ages, but the world, for the most part, has kept the secret of who done it. Right. And that a play like The Mouse Trap is apparently one of the longest running plays in the West End or Broadway, I forget. Yeah. And night after night everybody finds out who who did it. Same as Murder on the Orient Express. It's one of the most famous whodunits. But for the most part, everyone keeps, the, keeps it a secret, which I think is great. So that is like, really cool. Right now, we could find out who the killer is in Death on the Nile. But the world, for the most part, has, has kept the secret. The cool is thing is that I've, I've been thinking about this recently. There's a film that I watched. I can't believe I've forgotten what it was, but Welcome to Being 32, apparently. Uh, where <laughs> my, my old roommate would say to me, um, there are no spoilers in film school. He was, uh, he is a lecturer at AFTA, right? Yeah. No spoilers in film school. Um, or there are spoilers in film school, sorry. And the whole idea is that it really doesn't matter if you know what the ending is. It's not about the destination, it's the journey, right? Sure. You can know how a film ends, like American Beauty, but you are going to see how it happens. That's why you engage with it. Sure. No, but, right? I, just, I, but I just love how the, 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 the secret of such a famous whodunit is, is being kept. Right, they actually like yeah, no one because that's talks part of the fun. It. Yeah, that's part of the fun. It's like, like think about it. If we talk about it. Knives Out or we talk about Murder on the Orient Express, no one's going to say. I don't want to tell you yeah, what it is. Yeah, you're going to have to watch it and figure it out for yourself because that's the entire process of being a viewer. The one thing I wanted to say about Kenneth Branagh, and mm-hmm. um, that's amazing, is have you realized how well he directs actors? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I could appreciate it's that. Like, because he himself is an actor. Yeah, it's like Shakespearean legend, mm. right? In 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 London or England. And he, like in the last one in Death on Now, I don't know like what everyone else's opinion of Gal Gadot mm-hmm. um, is, uh, but like the Wonder Woman thing is, I suppose, quite a like rigid, fixed thing with very expository dialogue and it comes across as just like wooden sometimes. Yeah. But in Death on the Nile, she was really good. She sort of came out in yeah. a way that... Yeah, just so surprising, yeah. you know. So it's all about that director's relationship with an actor and how they pull out authenticity out of performances, and he's excellent at that. So yeah. I'm so excited for tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, I must say, I, I did four years of film school, but it's amazing how one or two comments are, are some of the only things you really take from yes. it ultimately. And yeah. the one thing I got, which I, I thought, you know, is is very interesting for anyone, even if you don't, you know, if you're not a director. But it was this idea of knowing your limits, knowing what's possible. Um, mm. Anything from going, well, if you can't afford a big sweeping shot, then don't imagine it. Don't plan it. Don't do it because you can't afford it. Um, but more specifically, know that after your third take, the actress, if she's in the water and it's cold, she's not going to give you the performance. Like, mm. Know your limit. Know that she's going to give you a bad performance on take three like yeah. you've got one take or two you know like know your limits sure. it's just very interesting um but speaking of yeah mysteries i had just started uh the big well i think it's being popular uh it's a big netflix show called who is Aaron carter okay it's a limited series which is quite exciting mm. And um, I know also, nothing about it. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's all just unraveling. But it's a woman, as as the first episode starts, I just love how, you know, anyone can appreciate this. Like within two minutes, you, you, you're you in the world. doesn't need mm. much introduction. A woman is waking up and gets the fuck out of a town with her daughter. She's got to escape and she escapes what? on the, in a boat. What? And um, you don't know why. You don't know where she's escaping from. And it seems to be in sort of like an English town. And uh, they get on a boat. And then five years later, they're in Barcelona and um, she's created a new life. And things are slowly starting to reveal themselves as she's got this past. 
Like the past is catching up. The to past her. is catching up to her. Oh. I don't want to give too much away because I also don't have too much information. I've only just started. Oh, but, amazing! Uh, uh, it comes highly. Uh, That's a really good elevator uh, pitch. Suggested, and those who have watched it said it's really amazing. But it's yeah. Who is Aaron Carter? It's the, it's, it's who in the is top. Aaron Carter. Yeah. Oh so my goodness! So okay, that's, interesting. That's something that that I'm enjoying. I like a good limited series. Yeah, because I what don't. The series I, work, I don't dude? want to give. I don't want to give seasons and seasons, in case it's shit. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> a thing of being recommended uh, shows by people, and they say to you, "Oh, trust me, around season four it gets really good." No, fuck yeah, no. No. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen here. I don't, have t- I don't have time for that. No. Anybody? Um, have you got anything else to put on the shelves? Um, I have been thoroughly enjoying docu series. Cool. Uh, and I'm a little bit late to the party on that. So I watched um, the Hillsong documentary on Disney+. Plus. Oh, okay. This is a like a docu-series, also like limited series. Yeah, four episodes. Okay. Four episodes. And it's about, about exposing. Yeah. Have like, you watched the whole thing? Yeah, I've watched it from start to okay. finish. Now, just to preface this, for those who have missed previous episodes, I want to get into this and you're the right person to talk about oh. it because Cole has grown up in a very strong religious household yeah school everything and um to some degree raged against it later on in life later on yeah much later on when i was in high school i was very much embedded within it like you won the award for best christian yeah best christian character best christian character yeah which i thought was hilarious yeah (laughs) Um, it's bizarre not that you've lived in depravity ever since but like i mean but you I think that's interesting. Okay, so, yeah. so with that in mind. Right. So all of us knew who Hillsong was. If you're a Christian in a youth group on Friday nights, going to your church to either be part of the band like I was or to just give praise and worship and to go off into your small groups or your cell groups, as we'd call them, um, we all knew that Hillsong was like the rock stars of the Christian world, essentially. Yeah. It's a basic praise and worship band, but uh, very much in that... I don't know, evangelical style, um, that emotional priming. They are experts at that. I don't know if you've ever heard of emotional priming. What is that specifically? So it's it's the technique or it's like, I think it's diagnosed by other people, but it's how you hype up worshipers within a church space. Oh, right? yeah. There's no question that that is happening, whether whether it's well-meaning or very maliciously targeted mm. Yeah, I wonder. I don't think it's ever malicious because when you're in that world, it's it's the norm. It's like what it you feels, want to do. Yeah. And I remember when I played keyboards and I had a soft pad on, and then we'd go in the big chorus and then into the bigger bridge and then we'd bring it right down to just the pads. So sorry, a pad is a is a particular kind of sound mm-hmm. on a keyboard. Ooh, exactly. Yeah. And um, you'll recognize it as soon as you hear it. Very like synthy but soft and warm. Yeah. And uh, I would just play the chords, and then the pastor would come up after that like big huge chorus yeah uh and then like give the word and then you know uh ask people to come forward the the altar call to like yeah if you want to lay hands on someone you know to help them through a difficult time and it's everything so weird. it's, I, it's a different world makes makes me a little so uncomfortable go watch it happen in the hillsong documentary they very much talk about the culture of so, it but, okay but what is the documentary now so hillsong's a mega church in australia or was i'm not sure if it's a thing anymore but um, we had it i saw it oh did we have a hillsong church oh yeah. no 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 we we at least saw the i remember seeing the compilation yeah yeah like hits greatest hits greatest of hillsong greatest hits good okay i don't think we ever had it here yeah so it, it was essentially a mega church in Australia that became so massive and their band was their massive exports around the world. And then they planted churches, which is also the term used, around the world. And this is about the New York branch primarily in the beginning. Okay. okay. And the celebrity pastor that really through the culture of celebrity grew the attendance at this New York branch of Hillsong. Okay. Like Justin Bieber was a person that went to this church and like lived with this guy for a couple of years or like months when he was going through a difficult time in his career, the Kardashians went. Oh, wow. It's like a big deal. Okay. okay. And then the scandal, very Christian scandal, was that he had an affair. So it's like a practice what you preach kind of thing. And okay, very he much... Was, a, he was married, but he mm-hmm. had an affair while he was married. Yeah, and even in those spaces, if you ever watch those mega church, like w- watch through the eyes of Tammy Faye or the eyes of Tammy Faye with Jessica Chastain, if you haven't fucking watched that movie. A, a, a movie Amazing. called? The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Or it's through the eyes of Tammy Faye. We can correct that. Um, absolutely amazing. It's what she won Best Actress for at the Oscars. 
Oh. It's also about the corruption within a megachurch. Um, the best example of corruption in a megachurch is the Righteous Gemstones. I've never heard of that. Dude, Danny McBride, uh, John Goodman, Adam Devine. It's hilarious. It's like about this family called the Gemstones. And they are like cuck wealthy and they're in like some part of like North Carolina or like some kind of middle America. <laughs> yeah. But they're so loaded. Oh, and it's and it's such a great commentary. Are they the pastors? Yeah, and, they're the family of this oh. kind of mega church, and they live in mansions, and they got Humvees, and like. But there's a there's such a great there's such a great play on it because they obviously want to keep, and it's all about them rivaling other churches that are taking some of the audiences away. But they eat, they they all pretend you know it's for spreading the word of God, but they just want to make money. They want to keep oh, making money. So in, but John Goodman, who's the dad. Um, you get the feeling that his intentions are still quite pure, but it's a business at the end no, of the day. It's fully delusional. But it's a business yeah. and it's hilarious. That's kind of what Through the Eyes of Tammy Fair are about as well. It's like the naivety and like how the willing ignorance around I'm spreading the word of God, but I'm making a shit ton of money on the side, but, you know? But what is the point of the Hillsong documentary? So the point of the Hillsong documentary is first uncovering the scandal and how monumental it was they do a really good job of conveying that okay and okay. it's like it is one of the most well edited and produced documentaries i've seen it's really fucking amazing but okay. it it unravels and it goes back to the home church in australia and then that lead pastor's father who and i don't know if i want to give it away because okay, it but, goes but, into but catholic more, territory that's all i'm gonna more say conspiracy comes out yeah but it's, exactly okay but it really does a good job of like I suppose putting you in the shoes of the congregants and allowing you to see like how their lives were transformed by the church and then utterly devastated by the betrayal of this pastor. Okay. And, and that is that is called Hillsong. Yeah, it's the Hillsong story. I can't the remember Hillsong story what the on name Disney Plus. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um and All the right. other thing I've started watching is Welcome to Wrexham. It's great. It is. Amazing. And it's good to watch ahead of the new season coming yes, up. Yes, that's what I that's what I thought. And I think I've always said that Moneyball with Brad Pitts and Jenny yeah. Hill. Like any kind of baseball, basketball movie, I don't know anything about those sports. Don't give a shit about those sports. Yeah. But as soon as you put a story in that world, and by the end of that movie, you'll go, this is the fucking greatest sport ever made. You know, this <laughs> is art. Yeah, for the most part, it, it helps you give a shit about soccer. So Welcome to Wrexham is a, another docu-series about what is happening, you know, a real life story of... Um, Ryan Reynolds, who we all know is a famous Hollywood actor, and Rob McElhoney, who's also an actor. He's on um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm. They buy a very down-on-its-luck Welsh soccer team, and they are, are trying putting to be their managers. heart and soul yeah. into trying to bring this team up mm-hmm. um, as a f- fun thing to do with their time oh, sorry, and money. Like, I just realized... like. Watching this, you learn about the world of soccer. And I just said they're trying to be managers, but they're owners and they're hiring they, managers. They're owners. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's really great. And it's really smart because they're putting a lot of their weight behind it. And it, it's just a story of like a team being given a chance and a town. Yeah. It's, and, it's like interesting how they open it up to the and bar. I th- and, and I think they knew that if they were to make a TV show about what they were doing in real life, that it would ultimately help their team. Totally. Because it brings more people. More people in the stands makes the players play better. More support of the jerseys helps the team afford yeah. better players and better managers and better kit. And this team is getting better and better. But what I love about it mm-hmm. is that you can't predict. No. You can't you can't write the script of whether or not the team actually makes it into the next round or not. Yes. Um, but someone must have explained to them that this was a smart investment because there are these these levels of leagues in the UK and you can work your way up. And if you've bought a team that is in the bottom league for X amount and you've invested in it, if that team makes it up three or four rungs, you could be selling it in the future for billions. Yeah. If they Absolute if Wrexham becomes another Arsenal or another Manchester yeah, United the or Chelsea, League. like it is, it's it's an incredible 
investment. But yeah. someone also exposed it in, in a chat, um, which is in an episode coming out where there where there's an argument that it was an interesting tax write off for the guys to spend that money. Rather spend the money now on something like a team to not have to pay tax in the current year because you can declare losses. It's a, it's a smart use of their money as guys who, who wow. deal with millions and millions. That is, yeah, understanding that world, it's so far beyond me. That's so someone was like, you need to spend a big chunk of your money yeah. so that you don't have to pay tax on it. A smart thing to do is to buy a, a team. Oh my God. It's interesting. That is very interesting. Not that, it, that doesn't make it tainted yes it's it's a s- smart use of their money yeah but welcome to Wrexham is such a great show it's, it's got on a lot Disney of heart. plus it's got a lot of heart you really get to the owners of the 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 bars that you know rely on the games it follows the supporters so yeah that's coming out soon mm. um let's get into our coming soon list these right. are the these are the films that uh we want to order so that they make it into the video store mm. Um, that's a big part of, of being a video store is making sure we are looking at the right things coming out soon and making sure we stock them. Um, Sex Education, the final season. Oh my word, did you see the posters? It's great. It's so Everyone brilliant. with their like O, o face. face. <laughs> um, that's going to be September the 21st. I'm so excited. So September's a good month. Uh, that's on Netflix. There's also uh, an interesting limited series on Apple TV Plus called The Supermodels. Oh? Um, that's coming out the 20th of September. What's it about? Um, it's about the, the the supermodels. There was an era where there was f- four or five women who were considered like the supermodels. Like they Heidi were, Klum? Uh, pre that. Cindy what? Crawford, oh, Naomi Campbell, wow. Christy Turlington. Okay, yes. And, and it's about them and their life and what they went through and what they did. Ooh. And how they used their power in a good way. Interesting, Amazing. It's like kind of like that, well, very different too, but like kind of like the Brooke Shields story. Yeah, it's interesting when, when you can look back and sometimes you need enough time to look back and go, okay, well, why was that important? And what were we doing that no one expected us to do? And what were we now able to do that no one ever saw coming? And, cool. and it, was, it was about, I think ultimately, I haven't seen it, obviously it's still to come out, but it, it'll be... It suggests that it's about women, these women understanding their power, using their power wisely, mm. and, and, and how they found power. Amazing. Interesting. That sounds great. Yeah. No, the supermodels on Apple TV+. Plus. Cool. Is there anything else in the, in the coming soon list you want to make sure you get? No, I mean, everything's been delayed to 2024, unfortunately, because the actor, well, has yeah. to be. Actors and writers strike, which I can't believe is still going on. Wild. Yeah, it's crazy. But um, no, I don't think I'm, I'm stoked about the stuff that we're watching at the moment. And that's coming out this week. Yeah. Um, I like I watched The Little Mermaid. I don't know if you want to talk about that. I started watching it because it's yeah. come to Disney Plus. Yeah. So in a way, it's a new release because it's just arrived. Yeah. It's on the new yeah. release shelf. Let's put mm. it there. And uh, it's visually flipping impressive. Cool. You know, in the same in a couple months after Avatar 2, you're doing like underwater CG. Yeah. And it looks fantastic. Um, yeah, and I think in... I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of the original. Uh, but it's... I think it's better than it's in every conceivable way. I think it's probably one of my favorite live-action adaptations of Disney. Better than the original? Yeah. Oh, uh, cool. It's like the same story. Like, they're, they're doing the same thing, but they've improved on it. That's you know? good. That's what you want. Because mm. as we've said, um, shout out to the Daniel Snadden episode. Oh, uh, yeah? We were like... The live action Lion King didn't do anything oh, for me. Word. It just no. had me realize how good the cinematic first one was. sin. That's what it was. Okay, but, but um, they did it with with Little Mermaid. Yeah, I think. You. Oh, the only thing that's not great is Ursula, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. So I think it's interesting. Her voice work is incredible, right? Okay. But Ursula is the iconic Disney villain, like next to Scar. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this, but Ursula was inspired by a drag queen named Divine. Uh, I could see that. Yeah, and. Like the voice even is like quite a like deep voice for a woman. And there's like this this memory that you have of an iconic figure. Um, and I just think it's a missed opportunity to not cast a fucking drag queen. Like honestly. Uh, interesting. You know, like why not? Like John Travolta did it in Headspray. I don't know. <laughs> like what's the, what's the problem here? But okay. I think the big problem is the drag queens were losing their mind over her makeup. 
I just like your Disney, and this is the makeup that you do on an iconic drag icon. Okay, you know. But you see, I think that's I think that was lost on a lot of people that it was a drag nod. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's one that of thing the, where but, queer culture inspires, you know, is like co-opted by the mainstream, but then very much not recognized. But it not was obvious. another layer as to sort of why, for the first layer, it was as good as it was. Yes. And and perhaps that was what yes. could have been done, where they could have done the exact same thing again. Exactly. But um, I think the big thing, I don't know, you must let me know when you watch, mm. is uh, the makeup they they do a painted on eyebrow, like above her eyebrow, like a high eyebrow. I don't know what it's called. Mm. Sorry for my very ignorant knowledge. But the eyeshadow is this big thing that covers her main eyebrow. So yeah. then when she emotes, you don't see her eyebrows, actual eyebrows, like like giving Move. emotion. Uh, so it feels like a really wooden performance. Even though the voice work is fantastic, you can hear the anger and the frustration in her voice. Yeah. The singing's amazing even. Have but you Have you heard that amazing fact about facial expressions and, and empathy relating to facial expressions. Kind of? Okay, let I me explain it again. Yeah. I think it's, it's one of the coolest things I've heard in a while. Yeah? When you are talking to someone and they are using facial expressions to tell a story, their eyes go big or they frown or they laugh or they're smiling because they're telling a funny story. If someone has a lot of facial expressions and you are listening to their story, you empathize more with them because what happens when you listen to someone is you copy their emotions. So if I'm telling you a story and I'm smiling and it's a really big smile, like you I'm smiling right, now, right now, you're smiling listening yeah. to it. And, and there is a fact that if someone has had, for example, a lot of Botox and they can't frown and show as much facial expression, you are inadvertently going to be less empathetic with that person. You are going to care less about them and what's happened to them because you can't mimic their emotions because their emotions aren't that big or animated when they are talking to you. What? So l engaging with people's storytelling on a day-to-day -day basis is engaging because we can copy the emotion that they are experiencing. By us being able to copy, we can empathize more. Because we understand the joy. We understand the terror. Because we're doing it. We're, our face is copying their face. Wild. So if there's not much emotion there, like you said, Ursula isn't able to emote herself as well. Yes. You watching her, you feel less empathetic. Yeah. You can't, you're not engaging as well. What? Because her face is wooden. Yeah. That is crazy. And the same goes for Good you fact. talking to someone with a lot of plastic surgery where they can't smile properly and they can't frown properly you are going to be less empathetic with them. Wild. Interesting, huh? That is a stunning... It's a cool fact. Yeah. Fun um, fact. <laughs> I wanted fact. to say, sorry, uh, before moving on from The Little Mermaid, sorry, is that uh, the Under the Sea sequence, oh, yeah. Rob Marshall, director of Chicago. Yes. Um, like a Broadway director, I think. Yeah, yeah. Does such a good job of that number. And if you take it in contrast to, oh, I just can't wait to be king from the live action Lion King, where you're just like... This is really disappointing. Yeah. You know, he's not riding on the back of giraffes or whatever. Yeah. Like it was an animated film. It, it, it feels like a musical number. It feels big. And the oh, Sebastian good. character is like the highlight. It's really cool. Okay. So I think you're going to enjoy it. Did Let Rob, me know. Rob Marshall directed the whole film. Yeah. Yeah. And then so he was the right dude. To yeah. Do. 100%. It okay. Took, it took a musical director to like make a good live action Disney musical. We got, a lot of, we got a lot of good stuff on the new release shelf. Yeah. It's like a really good week. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. What a nice episode. Um, for those who've made it this far, uh, we would love a little rating and review. We always like to hear from you. We love the validation. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. Please give it to so me. So if you don't already, we'd love you to please subscribe on the platform of your choice. Um, and please join us over on Instagram, especially for things like this uh, ticket giveaway that we're doing, but also... Um, all the other stuff that we do there and we chat over on Facebook. We've got a Facebook group. Uh, all the links can be found at the video store.co.za. Um, but today's episode being with an actor, a person who is in that kind of profession, mm. we also want to take a moment to share all the other episodes that we've had with actors. So we're heading backwards in order. We've got Haley Owen Waters, who was episode 69. We've got Rob Van Furen, the great Rob Van Furen, 
uh, who's also an actor. He was episode 67. Uh, we got Sandy uh, Tlangalala. Mm. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Who is episode 62, who also was a voiceover artist like Bonko. Uh, Shannon Ezra, uh, famous from Lioness and Do Your Worst and a whole bunch of soaps and also a household name in South Africa. Uh, that's episode 56. And then we've got our good friend Maud Sandham uh, as early on as episode 15. Oh, early so, days. Yeah. I always love those people who came in right at the beginning yeah, when there exactly. were not very many followers. So we love and appreciate those people the most. All right. Uh, but thank you for listening. And we'll see you again next week. We've got a big one next week. Oh, yeah. Matthew Moore. Oh. Very exciting. Honestly, one of the, one of the nicest chats I've, I've, I've had um, if I can be so bold as to say, nice. but they are just getting better and better now that we figured out our our format more and more, and we ask the questions, we find out about the the great loves, mm. great film loves that these guests have had over the years, and uh, it's really making for a great format. So thank you for listening. Um, my name is Russell. Today on the show was Cole Matthews. This episode was edited and produced by Graham Hackney. And uh, talent booking is Rochelle Krauss. And, yep, hope to see you again next week. Yeah. All right. See you then. Cheers. Bye-bye.